So tonight we gather here by candlelight to celebrate Christmas Eve 2022. Can you believe it's 22, 22 already? Almost 2023. I'm glad that each of you has taken time to come out here tonight and uh, be with us on this special evening. Over the centuries, there have been thousands of churches that have celebrated Christmas Eve with a candlelight service. And, um, you know, it's a wonderful time for us to gather together as, as a church and celebrate Christmas and, and everything that Christmas represents. The world has misrepresented Christmas, and we're here because there's a deeper meaning than just Santa Claus and elves and all the fairy tales that we hear and what everybody's doing on Christmas Eve this evening. We're here to celebrate a deeper meaning. Now, I love candlelight. I trust that you do as well. It's, it's something uh, that I've always liked. I, there's something special about the flickering of candle flames and the gentle light that they cast into a setting. Um, but tonight, when you look at all these flickering lights, these uh, lights are meant more than to be just the display of a pretty light show uh, or to bring us a, a warm, nostalgic mood for the season. The lights we see here shining tonight are symbolic and, and they hold a much more deeper meaning than the beauty that they cast into a dark room. On Christmas Eve, we're reminded through the sing of the, of the carol we just sang, O Holy Night, that we live in a fallen and weary world that has been ravaged by sin and darkness. And because of God's holiness, the wickedness of man cannot go unpunished. We read in Romans chapter 1, starting with verse 18, that the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness it's, since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power, and His divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Now all of us here tonight, we have seen the effects of the corruption of sin throughout the ages. And it's apparent that despite, despite mankind's best intentions, we are not able to save ourselves. And when we look at the state of our world today with what's taking place all over the globe, we can say that it's not a different scene today than it was in ancient times. As a matter of fact, it's, it's worse. As hard as we try to sol solve our own problems, we're incapable of changing or fixing what is broken with our own wisdom. Romans 3.23 tells us, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And because of the fallen nature of humanity, because it's so, been so utterly corrupted by sin, the just wrath of a holy God will come down upon the wickedness of this earth. Humanity is enveloped in a deep spiritual darkness. Well, there's some that might say, well, pastor, I, I mostly live a good life, and there's others that are far worse than me. I would say that the Bible reveals that those of us that feel this way, we radically overestimate our own righteousness and radically underestimate God's holiness. See, the problem is that all of us under sin are deserving of judgment. The circumstances, a part of being rescued by God, by God Himself, Humanity is doomed to be lost without being rescued by God himself. Lost in spiritual darkness, not only in this life, but 
for all of eternity. And through scripture readings that we've read this evening, we heard how prophecy was given through God's prophet Isaiah, stating that God had not given up on people. You see, God had a plan to send a Savior to us, a Savior, or as the Jews called him, a Messiah, who would be sent into the world to save people from the penalty of their sins. The Savior would come like a light of righteousness into the darkness of sinful humanity. And more than 700 years before the first Christmas Eve, the prophet Isaiah wrote, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You see, God had a plan. Because of his great love for people, God, in his infinite wisdom, planned on clothing himself in human flesh and planned on coming into the world, born as a man. Isaiah said in chapter 7, 14 of his prophecy, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. The Hebrew meaning for the word, the name Emmanuel, means God with us. The one who made us, who formed us in the beginning, decided that he loved us so much that he would humble himself out of an act of love for a lost humanity become, to become the savior of the world because he knew that mankind was in such a state that they could not save themselves. God the Father would send God the Son like a light into the darkness of this world. The one whom Isaiah predicted would be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. The Savior would come into the world to be like a light shining in the spiritual darkness. And then we heard the word read to us this evening of the Christmas story. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. On this Christmas Eve, this beautiful display of lights that we have here, We have lights dancing on the roof. They're like the starry skies on that night over Bethlehem on the first Christmas. There are five candles burning right before me here on our Advent Advent candle stand, representing the hope, the joy, the peace, and the love that God, God brought into the world through Jesus being born as a human being on the first Christmas night. The lights along the edge of the roof line represent the angels who were filled with the light of God as they heralded the Savior's birth. The Apostle John spoke of Jesus when he said in chapter 1-9 of this Gospel, the true light who gives light to every man was coming into the world. And the candle in this Advent candle stand The center candle, the center candle represents Jesus. It's the Christ candle. And it represents him as being the light from which all of the other lights shining in this room have their origin. Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So on that night long ago, God in his mercy came down to us. Jesus, the living word of God, born into the world to enlighten everyone who places their trust in him. In John 1, 3-5, we're told, Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. 
In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. See, the flame of the Christ candle shining here this evening reminds us of how Jesus has come to bring his light into the world. A light that does not fade, but brings life to everyone who places their trust in him. And again, with those lyrics in the song, O Holy Night, long lay the world in sin and error, pying till he appeared, and the soul felt its worth, a thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. You see, Jesus didn't just come into the world to enlighten us with his teaching, although he did. Jesus came into the world to pay the full price for our sins, by dying as a substitution for us. He came to die on the cross instead of us so that we would not have to die under the judgment that was over us. And this is what it means when we say that Jesus is our Savior or our Messiah. God poured out His wrath upon Jesus, God the Son, so that if we accept Him as our sacrifice, or in other words, His life in exchange for us, the wrath of God against our sin will pass over us. And this is why we've painted the red or placed the red lights over the cross, cascading down the cross. The blood of Jesus was shed so that upon us accepting his sacrifice on the cross, our lives would be spared. His death on the cross enabled us to be cleansed from within. And the beautiful thing about all this is that Jesus is God the Son. God in the flesh, sent down to us by God the Father. The Apostle James says in James 1, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be kind of a first fruits of all that he created. You see, there is a God-shaped vacuum in each human being, in the spirit of each one of us that's made for God to dwell inside of. That space inside of us was meant to be filled by God's Holy Spirit. The world doesn't recognize it. They're dead because of sin. That spot within them is not alive because of the sin is still there and God cannot dwell where sin is present. The believer needs to be cleaned. And this is why Jesus died on the cross for us so that his death would go in exchange for ours. And when that happens, God forgives us of our sin, cleanses us, and makes us a place where God can dwell. Because God dwells in a place that is clean. And we're not clean on our own. We're only clean when we come to the Savior and have Him wash us clean. The Holy Spirit. You were meant to be lived in by the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of light. We recall those further words of the Lord Jesus, but when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, Jesus said, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears, and He will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify Me, because it is from Me that He will receive what He will make known to you. The Holy Spirit illuminates the minds of people. It may, he makes us yearn for, for closeness with our God and takes spiritual truth and makes it understandable to the human mind. Friends, what I've done here tonight in setting up this candle display in this room right now, in addition to these five candles which represent Christ's advent and Christ's coming into the world. There are 157 candles burning in this place. 
and each candle represents one person that regularly attends our assembly. This building represents the dark world that we live in. And as believers, I want to encourage you tonight that you are the light of the world because the light of God, the Holy Spirit, lives inside of you when you give your heart to Jesus. He comes in and he makes his presence known inside of you. And the beauty of celebrating Christmas Eve is that tonight, for God who said, let, shine out of, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So be encouraged this evening. If you are here and you are a believer, you are one of these lights. Maybe you're not a regular attender here, but the light of Christ shines in you and through you. And the reason is because Jesus came to us, was born to us. He was given to us as God's gift to enable us to be participators with him in the divine nature. You are the light on you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, my friends, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. If you're here tonight and you've never heard the gospel like I've presented it, you can become a believer in Jesus Christ this Christmas Eve. All you have to do is believe and ask Jesus to forgive you and come and make his dwelling within your spirit, and he will. I trust that you have a Merry Christmas. Mar Morgan, would you come? We're going to close in one final song.